Goodman. We begin today with our latest edition of 1968, 40 years later. May 1968 was a watershed month for France, when a wave of student and worker protests swept the country and changed French society forever. It began when university students in Paris occupied the area of the Sorbonne and Nanterre universities in response to a dispute over visiting rights to a female student's dormitory. The protests grew into a call for wider university reforms and greater personal freedoms that led to three weeks of mass demonstrations. Hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets to protest heavy-handed police treatment. In a show of solidarity, 10 million workers, or roughly two-thirds of the French workforce, went on strike and marked the biggest general strike in French history. This is one of the 1968 student leaders being questioned at the time at a news conference in Paris. Could you tell us what your purpose is in being here? Go, go, continue, continue political work. Could you tell us whether you're for the overthrow of capitalist government in France, in the United States, yes. in Germany? Yes, everywhere. By violent means? Not against this question. You have heard what I said to your English uh, conference. What do you want to do with me? I say that I want to overthrow. If the capitalist system to defend its privilege is taking violence, we will defend us with violence. What do you want to the French protests reached such a point that President Charles de Gaulle created a military operations headquarters to deal with the unrest. He dissolved the National Assembly and called for new parliamentary elections. George Katsiafikis is a professor of humanities and sociology at the Wentworth Institute of Technology in Boston. He's the author of many books, including The Imagination of the New Left, The Global Analysis of 1968. He joins me in our firehouse studio. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thanks for having me on the show, Amy. Talk about what happened in May 1968 in France. Set the scene. Well, in 1968, there was a global movement against the United States and against capitalism, as well as against the Soviet Union and the Soviet variety of socialism. And the relationships of those movements to each other is, I think, one of the primary reasons that we see France erupt. In fact, in his New Year's address in 1968, de Gaulle said that France, of all countries, was an example of peace and social tranquility. But as you say, by May 68, it was the biggest strike in the history of France, a wildcat insurrectionary general strike that called for the overthrow of capitalism. Essentially, disciplinary hearings against students who had been trying to uh, be treated as adults and not as children. Uh, turned into police brutality of an unprecedented level, and students refused to take the violence against them. Uh, the student governments in all of France voted to support the students who were being put on disciplinary trials, and the police arrested the student government leaders when they congregated in Paris. The vans, much like the free speech movement in Berkeley, the vans taking away the arrested students were surrounded. One of the vans never made it out. The prisoners were released, and the police then attacked. Students counterattacked. The residents of the Latin Quarter supported the students. The special riot police that had been created after the worker strikes of 1958 were then mobilized, and workers instinctively sided with the students. Soon, within a few weeks, there were 10 million workers on strike in France, and no one knew what they wanted. The Communist Party negotiated with the government, trying to legitimate its own role in the society, and got a 35 percent pay raise for uh, more than a million workers, 10 percent general pay raise, uh, reduced work week, better benefits, uh, lower retirement age, and workers rejected it. Workers booed them off the stage, threw their lunches and beer bottles at them, and said, no, we want an end to capitalism. We don't want to work in factories for the rest of our lives in exchange for some consumer goods. We want a free society. So no one really knew what to make of the situation. Yet Charles de Gaulle was reelected. He absolutely was reelected, in part because elections are so uh, small a segment of the population uh, involving uh, a one minute act in a, in a booth but also in part because there was no clear alternative that emerged at that moment. Uh, student leaders like Danny Convendi didn't believe it was possible when push came to shove to take over the government. The stock exchange was set on fire. 
but the Parliament building, which hundreds of thousands of people had marched past, remained uh, as it was before the uprising. Last year, when Nicolas Sarkozy was running for president, um, he blamed the legacy of 1968 for leading to intellectual and moral relativism and hedonistic individualism. Yes, and I think here in the United States we heard similar comments from people like Richard Nixon and George Bush. In fact, the legacy of 1968 involves greater freedoms for women and homosexuals. At the time, homosexuality was a crime. Women couldn't wear pants to work. They needed their husband's approval to even open a bank account. Exactly. There was one TV channel that had to have government approval to get the news out. Uh, abortion rights, uh, students' lives were forever changed. Uh, young people have much greater freedoms. Uh, minorities in France, uh, despite uh, continuing setbacks, at that time were uh, everywhere welcomed into factories, strike committees, and said they felt at home in France for the first time. So what you had really was a thoroughgoing cultural shift. Now, capitalism, the world system, has benefited from every upsurge against it. If we look at the 1830, 1848, the Perry Commune, even the Russian Revolution has strengthened the world capitalist system. So May 68, like other events, has also worked to strengthen the capitalist system, or as Regis Debray put it, to Americanize French capitalism. How did the protests end? The protests ended as uh, individual factories were compelled to go back to work. Some factories held out. Massive police presence was used to bring them uh, to leave their occupied factories. But remember, this was a strike that erupted out of nowhere. And it involved, uh, as it emerged, workers uh, in one factory welding the doors shut to their managers' offices. So the managers were kept held, uh, hostage until they would agree to negotiate with these wildcat strikers. Uh, but the overwhelming majority of the people didn't know how to proceed further. The society had come to a halt, and there was no le socially legitimate hegemonic bloc that could lead people forward in a direction that made sense Professor to Professor Katsufikas put this in a global context. Well, when we look at 1968, uh, I think Hegel's understanding that world history moves from east to west is verified. We had the Vietnamese Tet Offensive, in which every major American military base was simultaneously 